Well, thank you. What a wonderful night. What a wonderful crowd. Thank you so much for coming out to Society Hall. Uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a magical night. I'm quite sure of that. Just want to make uh, a few announcements of some upcoming activities here at Society Hall, and uh, then we'll get to it. Uh, Saturday, the September second, uh, uh, we're going to have a, a wonderful, a wonderful female singer singer songwriter named Gabrielle Louise is going to be here. She's been in Alamosa a few times over the years, and uh, she's she's just really something special. I mean, just gorgeous songs, just amazing voice, and uh, she's got a great guitar player with her, a guy named Ryan Diltz, who's uh, a young, uh, one, of the, one of those youngsters, you know, that can do all the stuff, and you think, dang youngsters anyway, but uh, uh, it should be a wonderful show, that's uh, this, uh, Saturday the 2nd, and Sunday the 10th, there's a guy that's playing down at the Barn Dance Festival in Taos, who's going to come up here and do a show on that Sunday. Uh, Pat Byrne is his name. He's an Irishman, but he's been living in Austin for several years. And um, then hearing about him, there's just people that are just, uh, you know, fans as in fanatics, you know, about Pat Byrne. Keep telling, oh, you got to hear Pat Byrne. And I'm, so I'm really looking forward to hearing him. And uh, he's he's just got the he's got the stuff, got the soul like those Irish people seem to have. And the next weekend, uh, the 16th, we're going to have the annual Society Hall celebration where we block off the street and, uh, uh, you know, grab people and steal all their money. Um, no, we're not, we, not going to do that. Uh, we will be collecting donations, but it's a free event. And uh, I haven't written much about it because I, uh, I'm not sure exactly all what's going to be happening, but Ruthie's had this giant pumpkin growing contest going all summer, so we're going to hopefully have the results of the giant pumpkin growing. Uh, and also, the Rifters are going to play. We're going to have the city stage out on the streets. The Rifters are going to play, and Fred Hargrove is going to open the show. Uh, so I believe it's going to start at 5, but I, I'm, I'm not positive about that. Uh, Anyway, ho hope you'll come by. It's it's like I said, free, and uh, there'll be food and drink and uh, and giant pumpkins. I mean, what more could you ask for? You know. Uh, and anyway, there there's there's more stuff coming up that I can't remember because I don't have my phone with the list in front of me. But uh, we'll try to keep you keep you posted and send out an email every couple weeks or so. Try not to get too uh, obnoxious with those, but you know. I know how email is, you know. Anyway, but tonight is going to be uh, just such a treat, and so pleased that you all are here to to share it. Uh, I've known Eliza, uh, I don't know, for thirty years probably, uh, just as a, as an acquaintance or somebody to say hi to. And over the years, we just started kind of crossing paths a little bit more and I, I played with her a, a few times now and then and and uh, and she always said oh we uh, there's a project that we're going to do together sometime and that happened uh, I don't know three years ago when she moved she moved from Austin up to Taos uh, at a house that um, her and uh, her husband Bob Jensen own just north of town and uh, and we decided to do an album together and and then we decided to do another one and that's that's this new one that we're presenting tonight and it's they're both really great and this one uh, has been number one on the folk radio charts for a month or so and on like three different charts in the country so that's pretty cool uh, and and as the guy that kind of re records and, and produces and plays some stuff, I tell you, it's really easy to make great songs sound good. It's the songs. It's always the songs. Eliza has so many great songs, and you're going to hear a bunch of them tonight. Well, anyway, time for me to shut up. Would you please welcome Eliza Gilkes?
Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Don. That's all nice, good stuff. Don makes me sound so good. It makes my song sound really good. <laughs> <laughs> Man, when I hear that they're gonna, that Society Hall is gonna block off, a, you know, a, a, a block on the, a street and uh, have a party outside, that's my kind of town. You know, I was thinking with the giant pumpkins, that, boy, if we had a catapult, <laughs> now that would really be something. <laughs> and. Uh, what are the con what are the uh, are the contests again? A pumpkin? What was well, it? Well, it's a giant. You know, there, there's these varieties of pumpkins that, you know, Ruthie runs the green spot. You know, it's a garden store, so she knows all about this stuff. And uh, there's these varieties that grow. I mean, like you know, a thousand pounds, a, yeah. a thousand pound I've pumpkin. Seen you know, and she said there's been pumpkins of I don't know above 500 pounds anyway growing in the valley. So, but a catapult? No, that would be something. <laughs> Not not this year. We're not going to do a catapult. <laughs> All right, Dr. Richmond, let us sally forth. <laughs> in 
it wait till, I mean, it's been sitting like that, like all night, you know, for the last two hours, but when I started singing, it's just like, do I have this effect on microphones or other things? It's like, womp, womp. <laughs> I don't know. And, you know, it just waited till I came out, and it's like, oh, you. <laughs> Not sure, Don. It might need to be tightened, like, here and the... And the little thingy, you got a coin or something? I just don't want to go through that again. Did anybody notice? Oh, God, that is so awesome. Don thought I was getting humbler and humbler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just me. It's just little old me. Don't pay attention. I just really hate myself. Yeah, now that thing is tight. All right, good. Off we go. That's why God created Swiss Army knives, you know. That was a heck of a start. Uh, that song is kind of, you know, it's not, I don't, I never know whether to end with that song or start with it. So like after that, you know, that kind of revealing love song, it's like, okay, good night, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, we're going to, because Don has produced these last two records for me, and it's been so much fun playing with him and having him produce and working with him and, and hanging out with him and Terry and, and the Rifters and stuff. It's like a, I'm becoming, I hope, like an honorary family member. But, yes, I'm, I'm working on getting that status. Uh, but, uh, so the last record um, was called Songs from the River Wind, and... Um, yes, thank you. Um, there were some, it was really just because I moved back to Taos from uh, Austin and I, it was such a relief to get back to New Mexico and to be back in the Southwest that I was just in a state of euphoria for like a couple of years. I mean, I still am. I just, like being back here has been so great for me. And so I st wrote all these songs were just about m my love of the, of the West and the Southwest. So um, I ended up doing a few, um, redoing a few cowboy songs that I've always loved, but I always I thought, you know, a lot of these old cowboy songs were always from the man's perspective, and I thought, you know, it would be fun to switch them around a little bit and make them from a cowgirl perspective. So th this is one of those songs. You'll probably recognize this song with some slight changes. Pulled out a shy and was steaming my kettle and my dancing shoes. Pedal to the metal, gotta get to wash the key before the sun settles. So I dance by the light of the moon. Buffalo gals and pony boys get to congregating down in old do boys. Cowboys coming out to make some noise at the Wind River rendezvous. Sock and his heels kept a rocking, knees kept knocking. Tomorrow morning, better do some talking, cause we danced by the light of the moon. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight, come out tonight. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight and dance by the light of the moon?
Thank you. How are you? That little, that little tag song that was the different song that came in at the end, I, I just loved. That was a song that Eliza remembered hearing when she was a young, very young girl and used to go to these, spend summers at these ranches up in, up in the Rim, Wind River yeah, area. Yeah, in Wyoming, yeah. Wyoming. And she remembered that song, and so we worked it up and stuck it on the end of it. That I it, sang it to him, basically. I, I mean, da 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 I just remember from when I was like four, it was a shotish, but he completely did a whole number with it on the record. I mean, he just fiddles and... and uh, yeah, we never could find the name of it. But yeah, so, but it was, anyway, it, we couldn't cool. find the name, but we actually asked far and wide, as, as we asked fiddlers, and fiddlers, like they know thousands of fiddle tunes, nobody could remember it. So um, it's just, it was one of those things. Yes, if anybody ever knows. Oh, Eliza has a little glass, looking glass. Yeah. So we're going to, we jump around from different uh, time periods and different records, but um, this is an older song that I've brought back into the fold. Oh, is it up one from there? I'm playing it here. He says, he doesn't say, I'm wrong. He says, okay. <laughs> He's just kind that way. Does that work for you? Yeah, I said E, e or F is what I had written down. So I, I okay, what is this? This is E. Okay, uh, E will be more fun, won't it? Yeah. Either one. <laughs> we can go E when I go in. Yeah, that. when you're a genius, uh, you can play in any key. This is one of those, um, I, I had this record called Secularia, which is a collection of what I call my um, sp spiritual spiritual hymns for atheists. <laughs> I, okay. Through the looking glass Into another world still majestic silence calls me and I will walk on through the looking glass reaching for a place my eyes can't see wandering in the night time where I'll be at dawn walking on Beauty beckons 
A little more of that of the kick in the monitor. I, can you feel it? <laughs> so this thing happened to me uh, last year, and uh, I w was down at Kerrville Folk Festival, and I was just drove down there in my rental car. I was going to meet the Rifters there. We're going to do a show together, and. So I pulled into the parking lot, the Welcome Center, and everybody's sitting out on the porch, and I get out of my car, I mean, I left my car in, in drive. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's like, that can kill you. And I had one foot in and one foot out, and I, I stupidly never, do, never try to get back in the car if that happens to you, because that's where things go wrong. Things went terribly wrong, and I got dragged down half in and half out of the car dragged down this dirt road and, it and smashed into a tree and then uh, and then eventually I fell out but and I just saw the wheels go by me like that. and and so it would really and then the rifters showed up and they were like angels everybody looked like an angel you know I don't know if you you know you come close to um, the end and you suddenly things get very heightened priorities shift <laughs> and so um, but they were there, and I got iced down, and, and by, in about a couple of hours, I was able to do an hour and a half show with the guys. <laughs> but later on, it was hell. But uh, you know how it takes a few days for it to really kick in, how, how, how close it was and how bad it felt. But that's where this song came from, because I felt um, tapped into something, you know. And I also realized that I, I wasn't going to be able to have control over the, that last moment, you know, I wasn't going to be able to decide, oh, this is how I want to die, you know. <laughs> I like to get heavy right off the top of the set. <laughs> that gives you a chance to scoot out the back door during the break. <laughs> but I get a lot happier later. But um, So this song came out of that, just that sense of some something watching over me. Maybe it was just some part of myself or whatever, but it felt very strong and I was very grateful. Yeah, one more time, but God's got 
This is another one. Uh, that's off the new record, and um, so is this next one. This one has a good story behind it, because I ha was looking around. I had needed to write one more song for the record, and I just was like, nothing was coming. And I, I was just, you know, I had done all my tricks to try and fool myself into writing a song. Finally, I did a, a, one of my last trick, which is to go back into my really old songbooks. My songbooks go back to 1967. Yeah, I know. I was just a teenager when I was writing these angst-ridden songs. <laughs> but sometimes you go back and, you know, you can find things. And so I, I went back into my songbook and I found something from 19, I think it was 1981. And it was a really neat idea, but the song kind of sucked. I hadn't really worked it out right. And, but it had a good opening line and a good idea. So I just took it, and I couldn't even remember what melody it was. I wrote a whole new melody and all, all new thing. And when I started, once I started writing this, I started imagining it as a duet this time. And so, um, and then we got the song down. And then I, Don and I were just racking our brains trying to think who who can we ask to sing the male counterpart to the, for for this song. And and I ran through a bunch of ideas, but this one voice just kept coming back to me, and that was Robert Earl Keane. And I, who I'm just a huge fan, and we had done a show together in Santa Fe, uh, like a, just a song swap on, on stage, and about I don't know a couple of years ago. But I, we hit it off really good, and I thought, well, I, you know, I'm just going to ask him. And it's always a, it's always weird asking somebody you don't really know that well, if they, and somebody who's more famous than you are, to you know see if they'll do something. So I, I sent I sent out an email. I got his email from a friend, sent it out, you know. 
you know, you know, I wonder if you blah blah blah. It was so fun playing with you that time. Thought maybe you wanted blah blah blah. Could you? Could you? And I didn't hear anything back, and it was like, womp, womp. <laughs> and I thought, okay, he's one of those guys that the way he tells you no is he just doesn't respond. So we, and, and Don and I were like, okay, well, let's think of somebody else, and we had somebody else in mind. And then I thought, okay, I got to try one more time. So I, th I had another friend gave me his his text. And so I sent him a text, Liza Gilk was in here, blah, blah, blah. And I get, like, within minutes, I get that, sure, I'd love to do that. I'm a huge fan. I'm gonna, come on, how would we make it happen? It was so cool. And then, but there he's down in, he's down in Texas, and we were up here making the record. And so we were trying to do it back and forth, and it, it wasn't working. And so finally, just by some miracle, Don goes down to the Rifters, down to, to Austin, like, and he has one day off. And on that one day is the one, one day that Robert Earl could come and meet him at this studio that this friend of ours just happened to have that one day open available at his studio. So Robert Earl drove two hours over to the studio and two hours back and worked with Don in the studio. He was such a darling. And it, the song came out so great. His voice is like, I don't, you know, it's, uh, it has the most lived in, feeling to there's so much tenderness and the way he approached this song you know he, he seems like a kind of rowdy guy but then when you hear his vo vocal on this ballad you're just gonna die it's so beautiful but yeah. don had to coach him because it wasn't his in his wheelhouse at all don had to really work with him and at one point he turned to don and said well i'm not i'm no robert goulet <laughs> really how, how many people remember who robert goulet is you know if ever I would leave you. I love Robert Goulet, actually. And he was really, really sweet, really wonderful, and it really came out great. Oh, he loved Don. Unfortunately, he's not here, so you'll have to put up with me singing the song this time, but you can buy the record and hear him. It's a great song. But like, why, of all the people to say you weren't, Robert <laughs> I know, where did that come from? He's you know? I, I'm no Bozo the Clown, or I'm no, you know, but it was like, I'm no Mrs. Miller, but you know, I'm no Robert Glass, so cool, it so dated him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we of course loved it. All right. He's been doing this. We've had like this is our fourth show we've done together. He has to, he's done this every time. Am I older than you? <laughs> I am. Well, and and you know it's your birthday tonight, so you you got any excuse That's you right. want. It's Eliza's I'm birthday even tonight. Even older. <laughs> That's right. And there is cake in the break. We're gonna break for cake, and it's huge. So you all have to have a piece. Yeah, you got it. Or you don't get out of here. We break for cake. <laughs> okay, now that I've ruined that intro, let's play the damn thing. Did I dance? Did I sing? Did I do everything? I promise. Myself, I try to do. Did I follow my heart, finish what I started, pay attention to the music coming through? Did I listen to the sound of the rain coming down? And most of all, how deep did I love? Did I notice the flowers, the passing of the hours, as the moon and the sun went up and down? 
Did I look into her eyes? Let her see through my disguises. Did I tell her how she made my world go round? Did I thank her for her time? The way she showed me she was mine. Most of all, how deep did I love? Did I hold close my children, ask to be forgiven, give thanks? For the roof over my head Did I let fly my laughter Find my way back after I wandered down the crooked path instead Did I make my amends With my family and my friends And most of all Did I let my tears fall at the wonder of it all? And most of all, how deep did I? Thank you. When that pandemic first hit, do you remember how we didn't have any parameters? We didn't know what was we could do or not do, and, and so we just took all these precautions. I remember we were like, when we go to the market, it would be like this, you know, foray into madness, you know, to, and to go get food and you know, gloves and, you know, we were all masked up and we'd get home and we'd leave the groceries outside for like 24 hours before we bring in, wiped everything down with bleach. Remember the wipes were just like, everybody was like, you, the stores were out of bleach wipes and everything. And uh, so, but I re do remember too that, one, that once we were all sequestered inside, I remember the incredible courage of the of the people who you know worked in markets and people who collected trash and and people who were nurses and doctors and people really on the front lines you know with in this great mystery of of this thing and uh, so I, I i remember remember when in, in italy when the people were opening their windows at night and singing down and singing across the streets to each other and, and the oh, and in New York they open the windows night and applaud the, the healthcare workers and there was so much goodwill. It was very touching to me and and plus the courage of the and the service of these other people just to keep things going. And in the city, it's a little it's a little different than in the country, but in the city it's pretty crazy <laughs> when that when everything um, shuts down like that. So I ended up writing this song for the healthcare workers and um, also ha how they made me feel by just those people opening their windows and singing to each other. That gave me such a feeling of hopefulness and, and, and restored my sense of goodwill and humanity. So that's where this song came from. Drive to the morning light 
attention No monetary reward Just your hands and the hearts of your loved ones Trying hard to make a better world So keep your foot on the pedal electric in the um, in the monitor and also give me back a little bit of that high end I think I rolled off too much I can do it from here actually okay, that. just on and the electric Robert I could use just a touch more of that of her electric too if you want all right we're gonna go back to songs from the river wind I'm jumping all over the place but It's just a love song, what the heck. <laughs>
Now I'm lying on our satin sheets like bony maroni. Out there in the meadow stands my painted pony. Reminds me of a dream I had when I was a child. I'm gonna get up on that pony. reach that magic point where the tin shed has heated up. <laughs> I, my first place that I ever rented in New Mexico was a, um, a boxcar in Lamy. And uh, it was my first, my first rental. And I, I at at the time, I just knew I had to move out from where my parents were, and I, I was ju I had just turned 18, so I, I, it, it was time. And uh, but I was like, okay, where, where am I going to rent? And I looked in the in the um, Santa Fe Reporter, and there was like nothing that I could afford. I was a musician, and uh, as opposed to now, <laughs> but um, so I see this thing in the paper. It says boxcar, fifteen dollars in Lamy. So I'm like. That's for me. So I go down to Lamy, and uh, there is this big old wooden, yellow wooden box car right next to the tracks up on cinder blocks. And the, um, the renter was, uh, was the town, uh, what do you call the guy who stays in town and hangs, rail yard guy. <laughs> There's a name for those people. Not a conductor. But anyway, he ran the station. And, uh, and what is it? Conductor. Maybe so. I don't know. But could be. Yeah, is that the guy? He just was the guy that ran the station and he sold the tickets and helped people get on. Was a, this was in the 60s, so it was, you know, it was minimal. But that was, uh, Lamy was Santa Fe train stop. And so. Um, but anyway, when the tr so the boxcar was like beadboard, the whole thing was beadboard, beautiful beadboard and arched doorways and like uh, it, uh, you know, it was pretty. It had a door and it had windows that you could actually <laughs> lift up and down. And that was a it was a really old car and uh, so and but I remember thinking, how am I going to come up with that fifteen dollars? <laughs> but I've somehow worked it out, but. Um, so we used to go up behind the town and watch the sunset. That was our evening's entertainment. And that's where this song, this is the oldest song of mine that we actually, that I do. Ah. It's hard, hard for me to pat my head and chew gum at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling satisfied. 
just fine. The snow ain't so bad with all the wood piled up outside. Winter is the season that will show you by and by. Everything is still alive, although it seems to die. I can't help but smile as I watch the sun glow down. After climbing up on the hill behind this town, at the end of the day. I was commissioned by this big um, world-class uh, choir that's, um, to write a song from a woman's point of view about what's going on in the world today. And so they wanted me to loosely base it on Beethoven's uh, variations in A minor. <laughs> and I, so I listened to Beethoven's variations in A minor, and I thought, I thought this is too complicated <laughs> for me, the string, string quartets. And, I, but there was a, the first passage actually had a, a, a very tangible chord progression that I could tap into, even as a folk singer. <laughs> and uh, so I ended up writing this song, uh, and it's, uh, it's called Sunflowers, which is the, uh, the unofficial national flower of Ukraine. Storm. The 
Mighty pretty guitar you're playing on that. Oh, thank you. Oh. That's right. All right. Well, some of you know and some of you don't know that my dad, Terry Gilkison, was a folk singer and a songwriter and a hit songwriter, actually. And um, he wrote songs that you, you might remember back um, if you're my age <laughs> and one day older <laughs> today. Womp, womp. Um, so, yes, cheers. Thank you very much. Same to you. <laughs> um, so, but my dad um, wrote songs like um, Memories Are Made of This and Sweet, Sweet, The Memories You Gave to Me. It'd be a certain age to remember that one. And he wrote The Cry of the Wild Goose, which was a hit in 19, I think, 1949. So you have to be kind of old to remember that one. And then a beautiful song in the, in the 60s was a hit of his called Green Fields. Once there were green fields, Kissed by the Sun. That was my dad's song. And, but uh, he also wrote many folk songs and was covered by a lot of folk singers back in the, in the day. And um, he, this song that we're going to do is, is a train song of his. And uh, it was recorded by the Kingston Trio, by Gordon Lightfoot by um, the Brothers Four and, um, and uh, the great Tim Harden, a wonderful folk singer. And so uh, we're going to do that. I also changed this one to be from a woman's point of view. From the 
because uh, they want to leave home too and get on a freight train sometimes. <laughs> so um, this is called Fast Freight. After this, we will take a short break, but we want to do two sets tonight. That'd be more fun to, we could stretch out a little bit. So thank you so much for coming. And, um, and I do have uh, CDs back there, and I will sign them after the show tonight. So, and there's also an email thing. I have two Al Alamosa people on my email list. That's not very many. And one of them is Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> so it's back there, too. Uh, sorry, Robert, can we have a little more of that kick drum in the monitor? I turned it up a little bit too. There, thank you. Uh, Re release Velcros. <laughs> I have, um, that's a, that was a million seller. I have a million in my cellar. <laughs> I, that's a Jimmy LaFave joke. I can't claim it. Listen for the whistle and I lie awake and wait Wish the railroad didn't run so near The rattle and the clatter of the old fast freight Always ringing music in my ear Go bum again I wouldn't give a nickel for the bum used to be work as hard as any girl in town got a good hearted man thanks the world of me and I would be a fool to him down go bum again go bum again he
John Richmond. Eliza Gilkerson. <laughs> Thank you. We'll take a short break. Thank you so much. Well, let's do one more quick song before we take a break. It's in the key of G it goes like this. You all know the words. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eliza. Happy birthday to you. I, well, I feel like I'm 12. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is so sweet. I have not had that this happening in quite a while. <laughs> so, thank you. Really, and there's cake. Eliza can't eat any of it, but there's still cake. <laughs> Yeah, you have to eat my portion, too. <laughs> we'll be right back.
remember Great River. Don't worry about it. I mean, if you want to do it, it's fine, but don't worry about it. I love doing it. I should have worked it up for this crowd. I mean, this this is the song of this whole town. I mean, that's the that's the the river. Don't worry about it. It's not there. You know. Okay, let's just do what, do what we do. Check. Well, good evening again, everyone. Thank you once again for coming out and, you know, sticking around and everything. I hope you ate as much cake as possible. <laughs> that looked like good cake. I had a vicarious thrill just watching people eating it. I know it. Well, I had actually ordered white cake with buttercream frosting, and it came out marbled cake with the whipped frosting, but I figured it was a sign from God that that's what we were supposed to have. <laughs> that was a really nice gesture bringing that cake. That was really cool. What a nice thing to do. Well, we should have put, you know, 17 candles on it and brought it up to yeah. you or something <laughs> like that, you know. But That's right. You couldn't fit all my candles on there now. Baby, baby, I'm playing it cool like a love-struck girl from my old high school. You taste so sweet. Trying hard to follow my rules, cause I don't want to be one of those forlorn fools out on the street. Oh, but I could fall, I know you could too, right over the line, you could be mine. But we're doing the dance that two lovers do when they're out of time.
guitar playing right there, Mr. Richmond. <laughs> you know, I, I went to a lot of years where I haven't played a lot of electric. I grew up playing electric guitar, and then I got into the acoustic stuff and done mostly that for a lot of years. But uh, I'm making him do fun. it. Yeah, yeah it, it's fun. I know. I, and I kept. I remember when we first started playing together. I was like, "Do you play electric?" He's like, "Yeah." <laughs> If you look I'm, on the records they produce, <laughs> it's like a, it's like Eliza Gilkison vocals, keyboard, guitar, and then Don Richmond. There's like 800 <laughs> instruments. <laughs> and <laughs> all right. Well, this is a um, off the new records, and uh, it's a love song, and you don't really have to say much about a love song. Pretty self-explanatory. Where you feather down warm and your motorcycle cool but you're not very hip, are you, baby? And I like that about you. You can laugh at yourself, but you nobody's fool. I'm a fool for you, darling. Yes, I am. Want to see the moon glow on your sleepy eyes? sunrise on your golden skin because I, I want to be your witness I want to rock you in the cradle of my you 
Can he play? <laughs> oh, what a beautiful song. All right, now this is, a, let me see, is this, uh, no, this is, oh, I did them backwards, didn't I? I didn't do Here Comes, did I do, do Here Comes the Night? I did Here Comes the Night. Yeah, here comes the night. Huh? okay, I guess we could do that instead now. Do we want to do Here Comes the Night? I want to do something fast. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Let the little boy sing. All right. All right, here's a little apocalyptic, fun little apocalyptic song. The song started out as apocalyptic bluegrass, then turned into apocalyptic rockabilly and made it most of the way to apocalyptic conjunto or something like yeah. that before okay. we were done with it. That's right. Uh, wait, I'm switching this one out. It's probably not conjunto. I, I misuse. Well, I, 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 need, I need to Ruben to school me on the proper... But Ruben, isn't, isn't that Cajunta? I'm trying to I'm trying, I'm trying, Proper I'm trying, names I'm for the various styles and forms of, of you know, Spanish language music. Cause My brother is a huge fan of that music, and, and so uh, we had him play the guitar on it because he killed it. <laughs> All right, let's, let's try this. A little end of the world, but don't worry. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. It's so hard to give in to the silence calling from within. The stars are far away and out of reach. It's hard to let go to what they teach. But out of these tears I'm crying, and the end of all I've known, my heart will be reborn again. born
this one has a nice story behind it. Um, this one, it, it, it's also an older song, but um, I never could find a way to put it on a record, and, but somehow this new record seemed like this is the time to do it. And uh, it's, a song, it's a song about writing songs, and it's about why we write songs and, and really how incredibly essential it is to have someone listen to the songs. Because, you know, I don't really oh. write songs and go, okay, that's it for me. I don't care if I don't play it out. It really means everything to me to play them to you. And so I, I, I realized it pretty early on that, that I was, that it, that I was completely codependent with my audience, that I, I needed them very much, and, and it really created a lot of gratitude for you guys for showing up. <laughs> because I can tell you, if I was sitting here by myself, I wouldn't be having fun. So it was like, you know, this, uh, finally I figured it out. So I, this is what that, that song is about, and I often use it in my songwriting workshops because it, it really is kind of about, you know, songwriting and about you. And so on this record, though, I did invite my dear friend Mary Chabon Carpenter to sing the duet with me, and she kept sang so beautiful. She's like a Cadillac. Her voice was so awesome. So um, that, and Don and, and uh, Jimmy Statler from Down and Taos played on it. And, but uh, Chabon, we just you know nowadays you can literally send the, your files to a studio, and, and Chabon drives to her studio, and then you know sends a vocal back to me. It's, you know, I didn't get to be there for it, but she really, she smoked it. It's capo. It's capo. Sure that it wasn't the capo on this one. I was just so positive. The thing about me is I'm, most often I'm wrong, but every once in a while I'm right, so then you can't trust that I'm wrong. <laughs> it's a problem. Song's a sparrow singing, searching for her nest. You bring her to her rest when you take me in your heart. My songs are heaven sent, but never really blessed till I put them to your test. See if they're a part of you. Where a newborn with her lungs all set to breathe the first breath we receive that says we're here to stay my song's a voyager who longs to sail the seas but never really leaves to you send her
Well, I told you a little bit about my dad, um, and this song is, he was sort of came into this song somehow, and Rio reminded me of it, so I'm going to play it for Rio. <laughs> um, it's not The Great River. I can't, I tried to rehearse it, and I'm, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make mistakes. But this is a. This was kind of my my big hit when I was living in Austin, and they really played it on the radio a lot. There it was even I almost got tired of hearing it, but it really was fun to have. And people were like, they even recognized me at Whole Foods and stuff. It was really fun. I had to think about what I was going to wear for, at Whole Foods. <laughs> and so there's a song I wrote about guitar players. I, I was like mad for guitar players, and and uh, then. And then finally, you know, I, I finally had a therapist said, you, you know, if you just became a better guitar player, you wouldn't have to chase after guitar players so much. <laughs> and, uh, get better at your instrument there, and then you can just hire them instead of marrying them, like, which I did a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it always reminds me of the old joke, uh, what, is the, what does the lead guitar player use for birth control? His personality. <laughs> I thought that was the drummer. <laughs> Probably, yeah. you know, works all the way around. So, anyway, that somehow this song, I don't know why it ended up being, oh, the beauty way, it's called the beauty way, which is a Navajo expression, Nijoni, it's a path of life, it's a way to walk through the world and to m see it as beautiful and to make it beautiful and it's a, incredible challenge to, to walk the beauty way right now and all that's going on around us so um and so somehow that ties into the song as well i thought you know the music world was like the beauty way path trying to make it beautiful and falling off it right and left so here we go same today though darling wish i could do the same today dull-eyed kid and a little transistor tuned into wolfman jack picked up a guitar heard the sirens whisper and i never looked back little darling and i never looked back Clubs along the same graded crystals Polish the diamond in the rough By the time I hit LA I was hotter than a pistol But you never hot enough though, darling You're never really hot enough I felt the lights on a big, big stage And the fire burning in my soul Rages, but it's not something you control, darling. It's not something you control. Cord and my soul or my money I could 
could say But every time I say I'm gonna quit the beauty way I hear my bones turning in their grave Little darling, bones turning in their grave making that last record with the Rifters. They just have such a, a pulled-in style that really, I think, draws you in towards what they do. They don't ram their music down your throat. They, they, they beckon you in. <laughs> and uh, so I, I love that aspect of them, and I think they're super special as a result. I'm, their, their mix of voices and the, this choice of songs, and I know you already know this, <laughs> but it has been an ongoing discovery for me. And, and this song um, was the first song I wrote when I moved back to Taos and just fell so in love with every aspect of being in, in New Mexico and, and also that mountain there, you know. It's just like you, you, you got your back to that mountain after a while because we have orchard at our house and we have irrigation. So we've gotten really involved, you know, with the irrigation and, and the system and the the incredible socialist kind of <laughs> system that the that um, Asakias offer us, and really, you know, it's everybody just has to get along and share this water. So um, that has meant a lot to me. And be when you have a ditch, then you start to really get into the mountain because the mountain is the thing that's drawing everything down and bringing you the water and making it so lush and beautiful. So you start to develop this almost romantic relationship with that mountain. And so this song is called At the Foot of the Mountain. Ditches to flow through the town for the people who've lived there since time was unknown. The mountain is their home. At the foot of the mountain, they still work the land and they live.
Thank you. Your version would be at the foot of these mountains. <laughs> You'd like to have so many mountains to choose from. <laughs> Um, do you want to do Lake of Santa Fe or do you want to Colorado Trail? Which would you like to do? Oh, Bristlecone Pine. I do, you know, I've got to... What key do I do? Did I do A? Oh. I don't think I... It is a great song. Did you know Hugh... Hugh what's his name? Hugh... Hugh Presswood. Hugh Press... Presswood, yeah. Great songwriter. My God, what a great songwriter. He broke and had to do go, not my fun, um, GoFundMe. Did you know that? Yeah. He, he made his nut yeah, go. I did, I, did too. I did too, man. I sent the dude some money. He, I know he made tens of dollars off my version of his song. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's, why don't you, would you like to do something? Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be so nice. Yeah, let's I do. I can do Bristol Cone Pine if you want. Okay. Yeah, okay. And I can sing, I'll sing it with you. Yeah, I just won't play. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. Got it. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah. We'll sort of fulfill the request. No. The wrong person will be singing it, but it'll be the song. <laughs> I love his version of it. Yeah, I first heard this song on an album by a guy named Michael Johnson, who was a, a wonderful artist, incredible guitar player, and, and, he, and a great chooser of songs. He did a lot of Hugh Prestwood songs. And as soon as I heard it, it's like, damn, I wish I wrote that song. But I've been singing it ever since. So. Song about a uh, very old tree. There's bristle cones up in the sound graves, but they're they're not the ones that are four thousand years old, but they're they're still lovely and amazing. Anyway, here it is. Way up in the mountains on the height in the line. There's a twisted old tree called a bristlecone pine. The wind there is bitter, it cuts like a knife. And it keeps that tree holding on for dear life. But hold on, it does stand in its ground. Standing while empires rise and fall down When Jesus was gathering lambs to his fold The tree was already a thousand years old Now the way I've lived there ain't no way to tell So when I'm laid to rest, it will suit me just fine. The sleep at the feet of a bristlecone pine. And as I would slowly Return to the earth What little this body of mine might be worth But soon start to nourish the roots of that tree And it would partake of the essence of me And who knows but that as the century's turn, a small spark of me might can 
continue to burn as long as the sun did continue to shine down on the limbs of the bristle corn pine but now the way So when I'm laid to rest, it would suit me just fine. To sleep at the feet of a bristle cone pine. So it just as soon serve up eternity's time Asleep at the feet of a bristle cone pine Asleep at the feet of a bristle Thanks so much. Ah, oh, mighty pretty. Good, good request. Yeah. Um, well, I love your little guitar thing you worked out. It's so pretty. Let's do like you said. In the old days when I lived in Santa Fe before I moved to Texas and then moved back to Taos, um, this I wrote this song. It was like in the '70s, I think, and it was. I had a kind of a little buzz going with this record. I put this song on, and I and I did a little tour, and there was like I don't know some alternative radio stations back in the '70s were actually playing my record, and so I went to Phoenix where they <coughs> had the radio stations had really gotten on it, and so I they actually did a thing on me in the paper, and they interviewed me before we got to the, to play there. And they, you know, I, d I was talking about Santa Fe. They asked me about the song, and I, I said, "Well, you know, uh, there was there was a bunch of us. We had this dream, and it kind of died, but we, you know, we it tr morphed into something else, and we carried on. But yeah, we we were kind of filled with illusions, and and we were smartly corrected. <laughs> and so, uh, so I get to Phoenix uh, to do the show, and there's this big a full page ad in the art section, like big hair and everything. And, and uh, <laughs> this, you know, remember the hair from the sun? And the headline, the, the, the blurb underneath it said, Gilkison, dream died. <laughs> 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 yeah. So this, I know, it's like, well, God, I thought I'd been a little more articulate than that, but I guess not. So this is the story of dream died. Driving at night up Highway 25, blindfolded, I'd know the way. Up over the rise, like a jewel in the mountain, shine the lights of Santa Fe. How many times have I come home to you? 
just to have you turn me away oh you've been betrayed by the ones that threw you to the whims of the white man's way but you had shown no resentment and you show no resistance to the ones who've done you wrong oh they'll hang themselves on their own fool existence after the laughter's gone oh santa fe city of faith i did my time To the governor's palace, spirits walk the streets in the daylight, and some scream for blood, some bear no malice for the ones who stole their birthright. Naive tourists standing shoulder to shoulder with wise and ancient souls. tracks grow colder as the bell of St. Francis tolls. Ah, Santa Fe, city of faith, I did my time in an honorable way. Now there is a candle for each dream that breaks in the light of sand. A pleasure playing with this guy. We got one more song for you. It's so much fun. This has been too much fun. Um, this was the last song on the latest record. I did not write this song. I wish I had, but I've been wanting to record it for years, and it fit perfectly on this new record, which is called Home, and this song is called Home. And I hope you know, maybe you know this song. It's a Carla Bonoff song. It has a wonderful co chorus, and I will walk you through it as we go along. But uh, please feel free to join us. Is it in A? Or D. Yeah, okay. But I did put the capo on there. Yeah. <laughs>
city's a tiring life The trains come and go But inside you know The struggle will soon be a fight Here we go And home sings me, sings me you sing it. Hey, you guys, thank you so, so much. Uh, what a wonderful turnout tonight. Thank you to this amazing guy, Don Richmond. Didn't he just kick some butt? Thank Eliza you Eliza Gilkerson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Society Hall. for coming out. And remember uh, Gabrielle Louise on uh, September 2nd, if you can make it back, you'll love that one too. But uh, anyway, such an honor to have you here. Thank you. <laughs>